Good morning, everyone. Rise and freedom. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to the Wake Up America show. I'm your host, Austin Peterson. Glad and thankful to have you here. Happy Monday. Depending on how you feel about Mondays, you might be in a good mood or a bad mood. Very thankful to have everybody who's joining us here live on the Wake Up America show. This is Democracy Manifest. Today's Wake Up America show takes a look at what happened over the weekend when I did my civic duty and I joined the GOP delegation for Mid-Missouri and voted on platform planks, voted to help shape the future of the Republican Party in Missouri. And, well, there were many votes when AP stood alone. Oh. And there were many votes where I stood, I thought, with where most people would be when it came to some of the issues, but I stood alone. <laughs> of course, there were many unanimous votes as well where I stood alongside the majority and voted alongside my fellow Republicans on things that were no-brainers. When, when it comes to the question of educational freedom here in the state of Missouri, when it comes to gun rights, mostly we're on the same page as Republicans. But there were a few things, gambling, chemtrails, yeah, where uh, you know I had to step back and just kind of let the majority do their own thing. But I stood alone. One man with courage makes a majority. Just. Not a voting majority, <laughs> not a Democratic majority. We're going to talk about GOP caucus this weekend, what it means for the future of the Republican Party. We're also going to talk about the big news today, which you can use. John Fetterman, is he the better man? Democratic Senator John Fetterman has really been making big news for many of the principal stands that he's been taking against his own Democratic Party. He says that he doesn't think that there's such a thing as squatters' rights, duh, and he also says he's not woke. The Democrats are freaking out no, right now, man. No, God! No, God, I'm reading this headline. Please, no, Calm no, down. No! Shut up. No. Uh, yes. Uh, and I'm reading this headline this morning, The New Republic. John Fetterman is bleeding staff since his, quote, I'm not progressive flip. Uh, the Pennsylvania senator has lost several of his top staff members after his sudden break with the left. God bless you, John. God bless us, everyone. John Fetterman. Uh, we're going to talk about John Fetterman a little bit this morning. Of course, I've got some fun and interesting clips to talk about to pre prequel the uh, elections this fall. We're going to have John Miltimore uh, at 8 a.m. Central. It's John Miltimore Monday. Mil Mondays with Miltimore. He's the editor at large of the Foundation for Economic Education. We're going to talk about election conspiracies. Yes, it's going to be fun. We're going to talk to John Miltimore about this poll that was done by the Skeptic Research Center team, and it said that 58% of Republicans we polled believe the 2020 election was fraudulent, and 49% of Democrats believe the 2016 election was fraudulent. So about 10% more Republicans believe in election fraud, stolen elections, than Democrats, but pretty much half of Democrats think that Donald Trump stole the election in 2016. <laughs> this is Democracy Manifest. So we'll hear from John Milton more about election conspiracies at 8 a.m. Central Time. At uh, 8.30 a.m. Central, we're going to hear from uh, Tony Martinez. Tony Martinez. Looking forward to hearing from him. Austin, turn your freaking mic up. Uh, Tony Martinez is going to join us this morning at 8.30 a.m., fresh off of his trip to Argentina. He sent me some yerba mate, which I tried over the weekend, and apparently I have pissed off all of Argentina by making an enormous mistake in how I pre prepared my yerba mate tea, uh, which is once you put the bombilla, which is the straw, into the yerba mate tea, you're not allowed to use it to stir. You're not allowed to touch it. You just drink from it. I, on my first try, I have already destroyed my reputation with all of my Argentine fans. They don't like me anymore. <laughs> meal? A succulent Chinese meal? Uh, we're going to hear from Tony Martinez this morning, not about the Yerba Mate tea, but about a couple of big South American issues which you might find fascinating and which do apply to the United States. One is that the head, the president of uh, Brazil has announced that he might ban X, you know, formerly Twitter, which is obviously a dumb move. 
But remember, if you are like one of those people who are kind of like, yeah, I think, you know, TikTok, we should probably ban it. It's a Chinese entity. It's a foreign company. It's not run here. It's not run in the United States. You might understand then why Brazil might want to ban X, for example, because it's a foreign company. They don't want to have uh, people influencing like Americans influencing their country. So I imagine you'll probably stand up for your principled stand if you wanted to ban TikTok in the United States. You're probably in favor of Brazil ban, you know, taking the power to ban X because they don't want to have undue foreign influence in their country, right? Right? <laughs> uh, we'll talk to our friend Tony Martinez about that big story. And Javier Malay is once again pissing off libertarians in the United States. Why? Because he wants stronger relationship with the United States. <laughs> I just am so done. I'm so thankful to be a member of the Republican Party. As bad as things were at the GOP caucus this weekend for people who love limited government and sanity, uh, I just, I can't with my fellow libertarians these days, right? They're criticizing him because he wants to have stronger coordination with the United States, have a stronger alliance with the United States because he's pro-West. Uh, and many of these people who are criticizing are ostensibly pro-West themselves, but not like that, right? It's You're only pro-West for many of these people who are the typical type of people to criticize Javier Malay for the, for things like, like this. You're only pro-West if you're anti-West and pro-Russia. Do you know what I'm saying, right? These are the people who are like, Vladimir Putin's a great guy. Yeah, I support Vladimir Putin. He stands against the global homo West, right? I'm just, I'm just tired of the kooks running things on the right, right? We've, we're definitely not looking so great for this fall's elections in terms of just overall sanity. If we win this fall, I think it's going to be a miracle because despite the fact that Donald Trump raised a, what was a hundred million bucks in this last week with some major fundraiser he did, and God bless that, we're going to need this money so bad. We're still way behind on fundraising. Thank God we have people like Cliff Maloney who are out there running the Pennsylvania Chase program, and Cliff is out there doing things to try and get those a those absentee and mail-in ballots for the Republicans so that we can hopefully flip Pennsylvania red. It's a purple state now. Maybe thanks to people like Cliff Maloney are out there, we might be able to play the game, but I don't see us looking like we've actually learned many of our lessons. I'm not going to be one of those guys this fall who's going to be like, it's going to be a red wave. It's going to be a red wave. It's going to be a red wave. And then have egg on my face and everybody's like, ooh, ooh, ooh what's a red wave? No, nah, no. Nah. It's a lot safer to just predict disaster. <laughs> Gloom and doom. Not that I want to, but we probably better, it's better to be safe, right, than sorry. So when it comes to this fall's elections, we've got a lot of housework to do, Republicans, if we actually want to become a majority. Because guess what? The women aren't going to vote for us this fall. Here's where women voters stand in the Biden-Trump uh, rematch. Women voters of color, Democrat. Uh, Gen Z women voters, massively Democrat. Suburb of, suburban women voters, Democrat. College versus non-college educated women voters, Democrat, Democrat. They're voting for the Democrats. Uh, it's... What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, so we're going to we're going to talk about that today, uh, as well as a bunch of other things. A couple of house cleaning things before we get hit, jump right into the big news stories today and talk about the uh, the uh, delegation this weekend. Um, I would say that um, if you have been enjoying the content that Stephanie and I have been producing for the Wake Up America show, today is the day to join the Wake Up America show locals community, which just launched this past weekend. Now, I did this for you. I did that for you, all right, uh, in the spirit of Easter. Uh, the Wake Up America show community has launched. It's live at locals.com. This is basically a community, uh, a way to interact with other friends of the Wake Up America show whenever we're not live during the day. Uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, share creative ideas. You can suggest show topics, engage with your fellow patriots, be a part of a vibrant community celebrating and advancing the cause of liberty. So if you want to join the locals community, be part of the revolutionary patriots with lightsabers. That's pretty awesome. And you can join the Wake Up America show community over at locals. Uh, Wakeupamericashow.locals.com. And it is a paid service if you want to participate, like post things and interact with other members. However, 
you can get your first month free if you want to give it a try and see if you like it by using the code Liberty Local. So head on over to wakeupamericashow.locals.com today and sign up for the community. And that way you guys can interact and have some fun. This is what you guys requested specifically last Friday. Austin, we want a community where we can hang out, where we can make friends and we can share ideas and have, um, you know, have like a cool little exclusive club whenever the show is not live. So head on over, wakeupamericashow.locals.com. You'll be able to be a full-blown member by using the code Liberty Local, all one word, Liberty Local, over at wakeupamericashow.locals.com. There you go. David Lee. So, David, obviously, another subscription. Obviously, you don't have to join, right? This is just a way for people who want to be a part of a, the community for the show that can interact with one another uh, you know, in your off period or off time. It's up to you. Obviously, it's totally voluntary. I wasn't going to do it and but you guys requested it so since some people were asking for it it's available to you now up oh, there you go so uh you can obviously not do it if you don't want to right but it's up to you i hope that you will and you guys can um interact with one another and make friends and advance liberty there you go so wake up america show.locals.com get a free month with that code liberty local try it out and if you like it then you can stick around and if not then you can cancel it okay uh also one more uh house cleaning thing actually two more house cleaning things and we'll get to the news i'm sorry i know you guys like to get to the news up front as much as i can i try to uh but today we've got a brand new video hustling and homemaking stephanie peterson's new show So today, if you'd like to see Stephanie's latest episode of her brand new show, Hustling and Homemaking, part of the Wake Up America Show Network, then make sure that you head over to apforlibertyshop.com immediately after the show. Housewife Hacks is her latest episode. She's very excited. That was that one premieres today, 108 minutes from now live, which but if you're listening to the audio version later, it's probably already live. So today at 9.05 a.m. Central Time, so five minutes after the Wake Up America show ends today, head on over to see Steffi's new video, Housewife Hacks. You can view that over at uh, the video at uh, ap4libertyshop.com. So if you're looking for some nice housewife hacks, ladies, Stephanie's got a few things that she's learned in her uh, soon-to-be motherhood and in taking care of the big baby, that's me. So check that out of Stephanie's latest episode, Housewife Hacks. And of course, this week's theme is continuing from last week, The Guns That Won. If you'd like to unlock today's bonus content and see uh, one of the most important guns in U.S. history that helped build the American Republic, then you can make a Rumble Rant donation today or purchase from apforlibertyshop.com during the show and you'll unlock today's mini documentary. There you go. Are you guys excited? Okay, I've given you all the news. All right, so let's of course hit the fun clips before we uh, before we talk about uh, the delegation over the weekend for the GOP caucus, as well as the uh, story of John Fetterman, which we'll get to all during this hour before we talk to John Miltimore and Tony Martinez about national and international issues. This video just made me laugh. This is a Biden supporter who goes to the grocery store, sees the price of the goods that he's buying, and has a change of heart. The fresh maker. <laughs> Very nice. So even though I said a little bit earlier that the polls appear to show that most black women are going to be voting for Joe Biden, not all black women are voting for the Democrats. Well, I voted Democrat for decades. <laughs> and um, then at a certain point, I started saying to myself, you know, why do we still have the same problems that <laughs> just like perpetuate... I really got frustrated with the Democrats and I basically walked away. <laughs> so I don't know if you know that walk away movement. So I, I kind of tuned into that. I just, I, I can't vote Democrat anymore. Like I looked into Donald Trump and finding out more about what was really going on with him and got beyond the media and, uh, and just, you know, I'm a Trump supporter. So, and I, I don't support Biden at all. Hey, well, see, there you go. So not everybody buys into the, what the Democrats are selling. There we go.
we go. Uh, so let's talk about the news. Uh, before I get into the delegate story, let's talk about John Fetterman. He is impressing me every day. I can't believe I'm saying this about a Democrat. Senator John Fetterman blasted squatters and violent crime, saying, I am not woke. Okay, so Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman ripped the idea of squatters' rights during an exclusive interview that he did with the New York Post this week. And am I, listen, am I going to get canceled if I suggest that this Democrat John Fetterman might have actually ended up being more, I don't know, Republican than Dr. Oz would have been? Am I, is that too far? Thank you, Robbie Theremin, for your Rumble Rant donation this morning. We appreciate that. $10 in the kitty towards our $50 goal. He wants to find out one of what which rifle I'm talking about this morning that helped to build the American Republic. Squatters have no rights, says John Fetterman, adding that the issue was one he often dealt with when he was mayor of working class Braddock, Pennsylvania. He says, how can you even pretend that this is anything other than you're just breaking the law? I am not woke, he says. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, we always try to push back against that, he said, adding that he had been horrified by what he's been reading the New York Post and their co coverage of the squatting issue. He said, it's wild. If you go away on a long trip for 30 days and someone breaks into your home and suddenly they have rights, like, this is crazy. Like, if somebody stole your car and they held it for 30 days and somehow you now have some rights? I mean... <laughs> it is a little bit odd, I would say. So, uh, like you, I mean, are you shocked to hear this from John Fetterman? It, he has been sort of leaning to the right a little bit more these days, but there is something f fascinating about watching a Democrat go through... So the Babylon Bee had a joke, man recovering from brain trauma suddenly realizes he's more of a conservative. <laughs> Remote Bear, our friend over in the Rumble chat, says, Fetterman is a lefty, just not wholly insane. Rare find these days. Very true. Uh, Fetterman says uh, he also was tearing into the Democrats' soft on crime policies. He said that that contributed to the fatal shooting of NYPD detective Jonathan Diller. Fetterman said, I've gone to police funerals. If this individual is convicted, he should spend the rest of his life in prison and never have an opportunity to get out. Now, the accused killer of this NYPD officer, Guy Rivera, had had at least 21 prior arrests, mainly for drugs and assault, before he had fatally shot Detective Diller at a tra during a traffic stop in Queens last month. Fetterman said he believed in some second chances, but not 20. Hey! Now you can see why the Democrats do not like hearing this. Uh, you know, I'm seeing this headline, John Fetterman bleeding staff since his, they say it's I'm not progressive flip here. They're saying he's not, I'm prog not progressive. He said, I'm not woke. Okay. He said, he, I'm not woke. I didn't get the so the, this is how you know the, the media lies. The New Republic, they were the ones who did that big hit piece on Ron Paul back in the day. Let me show you this headline here from the New Republic. This is how you know they're lying to you, okay? Take a look at this headline. It says, John Fetterman bleeding staff since his I'm not progressive flip. See that headline? I'm not progressive, right? He said, I'm not woke. Not I'm not progressive. Fascinating. There you go. Boom. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I noticed uh, Levin 214's comment. He says he's become more right leaning since he split up with his wife. Yeah, I've seen that true. Uh, but uh, Kennedy should have chosen Fetterman for VP, says Robbie Thurman. That was a good idea, Robbie. <laughs> Gypsies, tramps, and thieves. Uh, continuing along with this story from the New York Post. Um, so Fetterman talking about violent crime, people not getting. 20 second chances says if you have those kinds of established records it doesn't serve any greater goal to allow people that are offending uh offending and offending and allow them to not be held accountable he says we have to be very smart and aggressive on crime oh the democrats don't no, like that God! No. 
is uh, he's been taking a lot of heat from the Democrats for being soft on uh, for who accuse uh, he, he he's taken a lot of heat from critics on the left who he says uh, are being soft on crime. I mean, God, the, the Israel issue, another thing that he's breaking with progressive Democrats on, uh, you know, more and more national Democrats are, are drifting even closer towards Hamas and their swing state voters in Michigan, right? So Fetterman has stayed completely steadfast in his support of the Jewish state and called out New York Senator Chuck Schumer for remarks that he had made calling for new elections in, in Israel. Fetterman said about that, that it's reasonable if you want to criticize but to call for effectively like a regime change in Israel, I disagree. He says, I don't agree because Israel is a democracy. He says it's our key special ally and our nation wouldn't our nation wouldn't appreciate any kind of foreign input. So why would we do that for Israel? He also condemned the US's decision to allow for a to allow a United Nations ceasefire resolution to pass. And he said Israel had the right and imperative to proceed with their invasion of Rafa. All right, come on, John Fetterman. Just join us in the Republican Party already. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's kind of like taking over the, the Joe Manchin position as kind of like our little kept pet, our little Democrat pet, you know what I'm saying, right? Just kidding. No, you stay over there. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, we need, we're going to need John Fetterman. So some of the, the Republican bills, when we finally take this country back over, the Republicans are in control of the House, the Senate, and the White House. We're going to need him to stay as a Democrat so that it can appear as if our ideas are their ideas and the legislation is bipartisan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you've never seen uh, Steven Spielberg's movie Lincoln with uh, Daniel Day-Lewis as uh, playing the title role, then you're missing out. There's a great scene in that film where the congressman from, I believe, Missouri is pressured by the leader of the House Republicans uh, who is uh, a, a, a member of the Radical Republican Caucus, Anti-Slavery Caucus, to pass the 13th Amendment, they put this pressure on one of the Missouri House Republicans and tell him that he is going to support the 13th Amendment, but as a Democrat. And the guy's like, okay, I'll do whatever you say, I'll join the Republican Party. And he's uh, Thaddeus Stevens. Thaddeus Stevens is the, the congressman. And he's bullying this Missouri Democrat saying, no, 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 you are not going to join the Republicans. You are going to vote for the 13th Amendment as a Democrat and then after, to give us the illusion of bipartisan support. And then you're going to join the Republican Party <laughs> so that he could hold on to his seat because he knew that he was going to lose his election if he didn't join the Republican Party. This is how the sausage gets made. And if you don't like how that sausage gets made, you're going to absolutely hate how the sausage got made this weekend at the Missouri Repu Mid Missouri Republican Congressional District Delegation Caucus, of which well, I was in attendance and a voting member. And well, things got a little bit weird. And now we're going to talk about that. Are you ready? Okay, I see you guys are sharing out the locals, the brand new community. Uh, I started this community as a way to allow everybody who's jo who's joining the show this morning to have a place to go and to share with one another and to make friends while the show is not live because you requested it. Last Friday, people were in the chat saying, Austin, we want a locals community. Now you've got it. There you go. Wakeupamericashow.locals.com. Now you're going to, again, get a free month. If you don't have a membership to the locals community, you can't like comment and create posts and do things that you really want to be able to do in the community. So I'll give you a free month to start. Just use the code Liberty Local, Liberty Local, no S at the end, Liberty Local, all one word. Get a free month, then you can comment, you can chat, you guys can make friends, hang out whenever the show isn't live you know, send questions, guests, tips, and things like that. You've got your own little community now. Congratulations. Welcome to the family. We are family. Nice to see 324 people joining us live here on the Wake Up America show. Do me a favor real quick, will you? Hit that like button. As a matter of fact, don't do me a favor. Somebody told me to stop saying do me a favor. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this instead. Can you help me out with something? click the like button over there. And if you haven't clicked follow on the show, the Wake Up America show stream, make sure that you click follow uh, on that Rumble feed before you leave today so that you can help us to spread the ideas of economic freedom and personal liberty. And you'll be able to find us a lot easier. The show schedule is Monday through Friday, 
7 to 9 a.m. Central Time. We'd love to have you come back and join us. Text lines are always open. You can text the show at 573-319-1586. Again, that text line is 573-319-1586. We appreciate all of our listeners who are joining us live this morning, and we're grateful to have you here. About 30 minutes until we speak to John Miltimore about election conspiracies. After that, we're going to speak to Tony Martinez about his uh, trip to Argentina, about how Javier Malay wants to build stronger ties with the United States, and how Brazil's president may be uh, banning X.com, Twitter. Yeah, so no good. But we'll hear from Tony Martinez about that at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. I'd like to spend the next 30 minutes talking to you all a little bit about uh, the GOP caucus over the weekend. My lovely wife, Stephanie, was in attendance with me. And uh, for those who you know might not be familiar, the uh, the way that the the caucus system works in the state of Missouri is that in order to be a voting member of a GOP delegation, you first have to appear at your county level caucus. And once you appear at your county level caucus, you have to run for the job of becoming a delegate at that caucus, receive a majority of the votes, and then you get the privilege, if you win, to go on to your multi-county regional caucus, and the regional caucus delegates then go on to become state-level caucus members, delegates, we call ourselves. Uh, and what do you do when you're a delegate? Well, you get to vote on who your leadership is. You get to vote on who are the people who run the caucus, who are the people who are in charge of the caucus that day. You get to make vote. You get to vote on who, what the rules of the caucus will be, how that will be governed. And then, of course, you get to vote on the platform that you, as a region, wish to send to the state to be then voted on there uh, to be um, to learn uh, more about how this works. We're going to have a little bit of a discussion today, and if you have a question, of course, make sure you send it in five seven three three one nine. 1586. So several weeks ago, my wife and I went to the county level convention in Cole County. And in order for delegates to be elected, you have to put all of your, the names together on a slate of the people to be voted on wholesale. You don't vote individually for delegates. That might be the, the case. That might not be the case in some counties and in some states, it might be different. In Cole County, Missouri, Jefferson City is where I am now. In Cole County, Missouri, we voted on a slate of delegates. Now, when I arrived at the uh, caucus, it was my very first time participating in a Republican caucus, although I've been privy to party conventions and to meetings that are run in similar fashion. Of course, when I ran for president of the United States, I was at the Libertarian Party's national convention, and it runs in a very similar way. There's this rule book called Robert's Rules of Order, and and it's a way of ensuring that people's voices can be heard, but that also people aren't allowed to completely railroad any business from getting done by talking forever, et cetera, et cetera. A way to 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 keep order. So when uh, I was uh, when I was at the initial county level convention, uh, Jay Ashcroft, Secretary of State, he's running for governor here in the state of Missouri. Uh, asked for there to be an alternate slate of delegates to the initial slate that was proposed. The initial slate included the mayor of Jefferson City, many of the local party officials, names of elected officials, just people who are kind of known in politics in my local community. Well, Jay Ashcroft thought that they, they needed a little competition, so he set up an alternate slate of delegates, asked if I would be on it with the group of people who are mostly political novices, but some people who are are a little bit more savvy, and we put together a list of names uh, and and uh, asked for our slate to be elected. Well, it turns out that Cole County citizens, there was a little bit of, uh, well, dissatisfaction with the local party uh, apparatus, as it was. And so the sort of, I call them the rebel slate of delegates, which included me, swept the uh, the sort of established slate, if you will, which included you know our mayor Ron Fitzwater and many other local party officials, none of whom I really have like a beef with with or anything. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that there would be a voice for liberty that would be heard in our caucuses here in the state of Missouri at the regional and and uh, state level. So I won uh, for my first election ever. Thank you. <laughs> I had to be on a slate of other like. 
you know, 13 other people uh, in order to win, but I got in there, snuck it, snuck that one by me. And then we go this weekend on Saturday to the regional convention, which, well, I'll just say it was uh, a, a little bit messy. Now, I've been to worse, and I've seen worse, and I've seen weirder, but not much weirder. It definitely got weird, especially towards the very end. But in the very beginning, it was quite complicated with the dynamics of what was happening at the convention um you have you sit in a group in the auditorium with the people who are in your county so all of the other people who were the delegates from my county we all sat together and we were the second largest delegation at this convention the largest delegation had something like i don't know 40 to 50 people so it was that they were huge Whatever they wanted to do or accomplish, they could basically bully the convention if they wanted to. And in some ways they did, and in some ways they didn't, right? Not everybody's always going to vote uniformly, and that's not really what happened. Um, although when the convention, when when people voted uniformly, typically I was usually the only lone nay vote. When it was, you know, the, the, the ayes have it, you know, the ayes have it. That was in it. Let's hear from the nays. Austin Peterson out there, nay. We'll get to that in a moment. So the first bit of political intrigue which occurred is the decision to vote for someone who is going to run the meeting, run the run the convention that day. And it was contested between the mayor of Jefferson City, who, while I don't agree with on some political things, I think is a generally right of center conservative mayor uh, who has done a good job so far uh, as the mayor of Jefferson City. And I thought that he would run the meeting efficiently which is what we really cared about, what we really wanted, because there isn't a whole lot of ideological, you can be an ideolo ide ideologue and sort of like dominate a, a convention as the person who runs the meeting. But the reason why I like Ron Fitzwater is because I think he would have been fair and it would have been fast. Instead, they decided that from the major delegation from St. Charles County, which had the most amount of people, they decided that they wanted to field somebody to run against Ron Fitzwater. Well, the people who were a part of my delegation, Cole County, they all had gotten it in their heads that they didn't like Ron Fitzwater, the mayor, and they didn't want him running the meeting. They thought he was too establishment, too insider. And they pointed out that there was an issue, for example, like the prescription drug monitoring program, which Ron Fitzwater supported, which was a real bug in my, you know, a bee in my bonnet, if you will, a major area of disagreement that I had with Ron Fitzwater. But, you know, I've become more pragmatic as I get older, and I recognize that not everybody's going to agree on everything, but Ron Fitzwater is a good right-of-center conservative mayor of Jefferson City. Um, and um, his son, Travis Fitzwater, is a state senator from across the river. He's also very conservative and someone who I, I have respect for. Again, don't agree on the prescription drug monitoring program again, but I thought it would be in our best interest to have someone moderating the, the convention who was competent, right of center, conservative, uh, and who I thought would be fair. So they fielded this other guy to run against him, who I had no idea who he was. And honestly, it, he was kind of a disaster because he basically just walked away. Once, once he got elected, because Ron Fitzwater, the mayor, lost. I mean, he was trounced. And, and every, here's the thing. Everybody in my delegation, all uh, so there were 14 of us, 13 of them voted for the other guy and I was the only one, and I cannot tell you how difficult it is. And this is how, this is how liberty dies, because if, if you think about it, not in this particular vote, but in the psychology of crowds, you can't understand how difficult it is to be the lone dissenter when everyone else is standing and looking at you, wondering why is it that you are not standing with the rest of us? Why are you not agreeing with us on this particular issue. Well, the interesting thing was that later, the ladies who were part of the delegation, it was mostly ladies, uh, the ladies asked me, they, they, they pat me on the shoulder. They're like, Austin, you know, why didn't you vote for Bob Eno? Why did you vote for Ron Fitzwater? You know, what was your reasoning? And I, and I explained myself as logic, logically as possible. Uh, it, they were, uh, you know, and then they understood, right? When I had time to explain myself, my fellow delegates, I was able to be, you know, very convincing to them. Unfortunately, not in, in enough time to change their votes on that. But I, I thought, okay, let's just sit back and see how it goes. Well, as soon as the new uh, head of the convention took over, he basically just disappeared for hours 
while we voted on party platform business and that it got messy and it got and it took forever and we had to make all these motions in order to ensure that things were moving along faster jay ashcroft was whispering telling us hey listen guys you've got to take this action or you're going to be here all day i mean democracy is definitely much more of an art than a science. It's not a science. It's messy and it's dirty. And uh, there were many issues where I was taking many lonely no votes, more than just the mayor. For example, there was a resolution when it came to gun rights that was a very clearly stated, you know, there shall be no suppression of the right to bear arms. Under no circumstances will the federal government uh, or the state government be involved in gun confiscations and, and, and for no reason at all shall people lose their Second Amendment right to bear arms. And I'm like, yes, this is what I want to hear. Uh, this is what I want to hear. Uh, and uh, then uh, two police officers from uh, each delegation stood up saying, well, what about felons? And and the And we need to... Well, you know, as a police officer, I'm deeply concerned. And of course, you're, we're Republicans, so when the police officers say that they don't support something and it has to do with guns, well, um, all in favor of this, uh, say aye. And everybody was like, aye. And then all opposed, nay. And it's like one little nay over there, and it's like me, nay. <laughs> right. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to support the very very hard language because at the end of the day this platform that we're advancing it doesn't we say that it you know we can hold our candidates to the platform but we really can't we just pass a resolution saying we can it's kind of like that joke from Team America World Police when the head of the United Nations Hans Bricks Hans Bricks oh god Hans Bricks really pissed me off he goes to Kim Jong Un's North uh, North Korea's leader Kim Jong Un and it, and is like He's like, you must stop developing nuclear weapons. And he's like, oh, or what? And Hans Briggs is like, we will write you a very strongly worded letter telling you. <laughs> we will write you a very, so that's kind of like what the party platform is when it comes to holding candidates accountable, but I digress. I know this is all very complicated, but this is the behind the scenes stuff. And frankly, this is what happened to me this weekend. And I thought you might want to hear a little bit more about how the sausage is made when it comes to democracy. So felons and guns, the people, the Republicans voted with the police officers. I voted for pretty much total unrestricted gun rights. <laughs> uh, yes. So um, the vote against the mayor, felons and guns. Uh, oh, closed primaries. So they, the, the, the Republican Party caucus was very much in favor of closed primaries. Uh, and I could see that in one sense, you know, if the Republican Party would pay for their primaries entirely by themselves. It, but at the moment, taxpayers pay for primaries. Uh, and so therefore, I think that they should be open primaries. It's it's not a, like a libertarian issue, really, so much as it is just kind of like a difference of opinion. I just don't, I think that the political parties, even though I'm a, I am a Republican, I think the political parties just have too much power, especially over our government and the way that our laws are written. And so I think that we should have more people power, more individual power. And no, I don't want Democrats voting in Republican primaries, but I think what happens is, is that the the you prevent the ability from getting independent thinkers in the major parties and you get these closed with closed systems you just get more inbred retardation that's all you just get more <laughs> you don't get free thinkers you don't get people who are more independent minded which you need to win independence i think you just you kind of get and and i think that it leads to inbreeding intellectual inbreeding so the majority of the body voted yay for the closed primaries, and Austin was the lone nay vote. Yes. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, so there was that. Then there was the big question of gambling, in which the question came of whether or not, and I, I think I, I don't say I screwed the pooch, but I definitely should have taken a different approach. I tried to appeal to people's sense of reason and logic, and I tried to appeal to people's sense of patriotism and, and, and their love of liberty. That was a mistake. <laughs> Oops. But I learned, I learned later on how to actually get, uh, how to actually get things done. And I'll, I'll explain that to you, this to you in a moment. But when it came to the question of gambling, the resolution that was proposed was that 
the state of Missouri shall not allow any further expansion of gambling beyond what we have right now. And some people, of course, got up saying, absolutely, we need to stop gambling. That brings prostitution. It brings crime. Uh, they're murderers. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people, you know. <laughs> so what did I do? And I think Stephanie posted the video of me talking about this, where I talked about the freedom to make mistakes. Uh, I talked about how uh, while is, gambling is not necessarily a good thing, that it does uh, bring revenue to our state, that we're chasing people out of our state. There was another gentleman who was there who spoke who said, you know, he was a gambler and that he has to travel to Illinois to be able to bet on sports and do different things. Um, and I, you know, I, you know, I tried to appeal to people's patriotism and their sense of freedom. And there were a couple of people who did vote with me on that one, about maybe three or four people, but the majority of Republicans voted absolutely no. <laughs> So I learned from that vote that I needed to take a different tack if I wanted to get my agenda crossed. I needed to stop trying to appeal to their sense of patriotism. I needed to stop trying to appeal to their sense of their love of freedom. And I needed to get a little bit dirty. <laughs> so, since I believe in free trade, I don't necessarily see why it should be illegal for the United States to trade with our allies, including and up to the sale of fissile material like uranium. <laughs> Learning the lesson from the gambling, I didn't want to take another L and be one of the lone dissenters against the majority of the body and stick out too much like a sore thumb. So when the proposal was made, that the body should move to ban the sale of uranium to any foreign nation whatsoever. The proposal was this. We, the people of Mid-Missouri, Congressional District 1, the Republican delegation sends to the state convention, we say that we want a platform plank that reads, the United States shall not sell uranium to any foreign nation. Light bulb went off over my head. I said, point of information, which means that I have something to say or to add to this topic. I stood up and I said this. That would mean that the United States would not be able to sell uranium to our ally, Israel. Correct? To which the, the, the chair, the person who was running the, the meeting, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. You're lovely if you're listening, by the way. Make good friends with her. She says, that is correct. And I could just tell that the audience, and I could, I could tell, because you can kind of tell in the crowd how the crowd feels about something, that when they first heard that, um, that when they first heard that proposal, they were like, oh yeah, we shouldn't sell uranium. To, we should, that's dangerous. We shouldn't be selling that. We shouldn't sell uranium overseas. We can't sell uranium to four foreign countries. I don't think foreign countries, bad. U.S., good. Foreign countries, bad. So I could tell that they were all, if, if I had not stood up and spoke, they would have definitely voted for that and pushed that up to the, to the state convention. So I said, uh, so I said, uh, uh, you know, what I said, I said that this would mean that we would be banning uh, the sale of uranium to Israel, to our ally Israel. And I could just feel the crowd turn on a dime. It was like, it was just like night and day. I had flipped the entire delegation, all 114 or so of us, I had flipped the entire delegation to our cause. And honestly, I felt just amazing. I, I had figured it out. I had to stop thinking like a liberty-loving American, and I had to start thinking like a Republican. <laughs> You, and that's how the sausage gets made. So I advanced liberty, I protected free trade and our alliances with other nations, and I voted, I managed to flip the entire delegation against it, and that measure was defeated, and I voted with the majority, and I won that vote. Oh, good. Lovely lady, Stephanie Peterson, my lovely wife, how, who my, my darling who's trying to help me so hard in everything that she does, you sent me those videos uh, to my Facebook Messenger, um, and I will try and play them here for our friends uh, uh, immediately. So uh, Stephanie took a couple of videos of me getting up in front of the, the delegation and making uh, my arguments 
in uh, uh, favor of gambling and uh, other th- other licentious behavior. Uh, let me just go ahead and pull those up for you, but since she's gone to the trouble of getting them, I'll go ahead and grab them and play them. Uh, great. Would you guys like to see them? I think you would. While I'm doing this, do me a favor, will you? Oh, no, don't do me a favor. Not a favor. Uh, I want you to uh, help me with something, and that is to click the like button, if you wouldn't mind, and follow the Wake Up America show on Rumble. Click that follow button so you'll be able to find us again without trouble in the future. The Wake Up America show streams live every Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 a.m. Central Time. uh, And we could really use your support there. Okay, Uh, Steffi, you sent me the chemtrail video. We're going to get to the chemtrail in a moment. And you sent me the, the, I think you sent me the chemtrail video twice, Steffi. Would you do me a favor? Send me the gambling video again, actually. Maybe I may be able to find it from your, from your profile. Hold on just a moment, my lovely wife. Let's click on your media button and uh, gambling. Okay, here we are. All right. Thank you, Steffi. Appreciate the clips. Give it up for Steffi P, ladies and gents. All right, Austin, here we go. So here's me talking about gambling, and this was a big L for me. ...on the gambling cartels that manage the businesses here in the state of Missouri. And I can tell you that there are a lot of big corporate interests that do not want competition in this state. They want to hold and maintain control on their cartels so that they, if we were to allow an expansion of business, then we might actually see some competition in here and that would be bad for them. This is big government, as Brandon has said. And also, just on the human element of this one, like some of us work really hard. Brandon's a trucker, okay? He probably know, has a lot of his buddies who work very hard for the money that they have. Right? And if they want to go home at night and they want to be able to go and like play a game with their buddies, or somehow sports gambling in this state is illegal, then maybe it'll be coming here soon. But like, we work hard for our money, and it's our right to decide what we want to do with our own cash. If you're not free to make bad decisions, you're really not free at all. So I support Brandon. I think we need to vote against this. And what did we get? <laughs> Fail, fail, fail. But you know, if I were smart, if I had been thinking a little bit sh- more sharply, um, I, what I should have said was this. <clears throat> I should have said, the President of the United States, former President Donald Trump, soon to be President of the United States again. Yes, the whole crowd would have went wild. <clears throat> whole crowd would have went wild. Uh, the uh, President Donald Trump, let's say Donald Trump comes to Missouri, and I should have done my Trump impression. I would have just had them going crazy. I, I would have said, okay, let's pretend I'm Donald Trump. And I come up to you, and I would have picked somebody out of the crowd, and I would say, I want to come up to you, and I would say, let's say Joni. I'd say, uh, Joni, um, uh, first of all, let me just say, I love the great state of Missouri. You guys always vote Donald Trump. You vote Republican. It's beautiful. And I want to talk to you about the Lake of the Ozarks. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And as you know, one of the biggest businesses that I've been a part of in the past was gambling in the state of New Jersey, in Atlantic City. Uh, I love gambling. It wasn't the best business for me. I did have to close some of those casinos, but I can tell it's because New Jersey stinks. And I love Missouri, the Lake of the Ozarks. Beautiful. I would like to build a big, beautiful casino right here on the Lake of the Ozarks. What do you think? Now, Joni, not Joni Rankin, but Joni in the audience, the fake delegate member that I'm creating right now. Joni, what would you say to Donald Trump if he wanted to come here and build a big, beautiful casino at the Lake of the Ozarks? Are you going to tell him no? No, God! No, God, please, no! Are you going to say no No. to to Donald Trump if he wanted to build a casino at the Lake of the Ozarks? I just, are you even a Republican? See, that would have been the way to do it. See, that's how you use your noggin. You don't use logic. This is democracy. This isn't logical. It's an art, not a science. That would have gotten the uh, Republicans to vote uh, against that gambling measure. There you go. So, it you know, the you got to use tactics, advanced tactics. If you're going to use liberty in this, if you're going to advance liberty here in this country, and you're going to do it through democratic processes like this, you got to be smart. You got to understand what works with the crowds. Not You cannot appeal to their patriotism or their logic or their reason, or try and point out the hypocrisy of saying, on one hand, we believe in freedom and limited government. 
but we don't want uh you know another casino to be built the lake of the ozarks because god forbid that we actually do something to help build the economy here in the state of god forbid we create jobs god forbid that people are allowed to in their drudger drudgery mundane boring ass provincial lives be able to go and after having to pull like push out boxes at the plant working for the man 12 to 14 hours a day or driving over the road that they might want to stay at a big, beautiful Donald Trump casino hotel and resort at the Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, God, no. Save us, please, Republicans, from this awfulness. Oh, there might be a prostitute around there. Well, you know what? There was a prostitute hanging outside the liquor store that when, uh, that, you know, there's, there was a, a sketchy guy hanging outside the liquor store uh, this last weekend when Stephanie was there. And I'm pretty sure that all the Republicans were drinking as soon as the delegation was over. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> There you go. So what do you guys think about that? 450 people joining us live over on Rumble.com. Good morning. Welcome to the Wake Up America show. All right, we've got about five to ten minutes before we speak to our friend John Miltimore. It's Mondays with Miltimore. We appreciate that. We just added a new monthly subscriber, John Grizzard. What's up, John? Good morning to you, friend. Thank you for joining. I'm going to send you an email, brother, and it'll be a thank you for becoming a monthly subscriber to the show. You do get prizes and benefits, prizes and benefits, my friend. Uh, if you are a monthly supporter of the Wake Up America show, whether it's through the um, whether it's through the uh, Wake Up America show's website, or if you're a member of our new locals community, um, no matter how you are a subscriber, you get a 20% discount at apforlibertyshop.com. So if you are a monthly subscriber and you don't have your discount code yet, make sure you hit me up in my DMs, slide into them DMs, ladies and gents, uh, slide into the DMs and I will send you your 20% discount code. You're also entered into monthly prize drawings for merchandise from the shop, things like coffee and all that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so the last thing that there was that uh, the whole, that I stood as the lone no vote on at the convention was this question. Take a listen. Are bees our guide? Are butterflies our guide? They are spraying poison in the air. They, they have these reasons. They say it's the global warming, that, and, uh, which is really ridiculous because they're only spraying in NATO countries. They're not spraying, they're spraying really heavily in Canada, in the United States, not Mexico, not uh, South America, not Africa, not China, and not Russia. But they're spraying in the United States over and over, and it's poison, and there's a lot. In our soil, we have like 81,000 times more aluminum than we had 10 years ago. It's crazy. You know what's happening? Our trees are dying. Okay. Okay? Pause. Okay, so first of all, party business. All right, you're supposed if you're a delegate, the delegates are the only people who are allowed to speak at the convention and vote at the convention, okay? This woman is not a delegate, so she shouldn't have been allowed to speak uh, in the first place. So uh, she, But she was joining in with another guy who had brought up the whole chemtrail issue, and they were pushing forward a resolution to prevent the spraying from the skies of chemicals in order to initiate mind control and have George Soros all but, you know, do us in the butt. Um, ha, ha, ha. But this, uh, this lady gets up. First of all, she says this. Our bees are dying. Laws. There's a claim. Our bees are dying. Are our bees dying? Bee population. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to a little thing called Google.com. Wow. Wait. Does America suddenly have a record number of bees? <laughs> Struggling beekeepers. This was last year. Stabilize U.S. honeybee population. This is this year, January, February, March 29th. If you don't read the news and stay up to what's going on, then you might be paying attention to things that are happening. Years ago, ah, uh, bee populations, bee decline, bee decline. Years ago, years ago, years ago, and now we see bee populations on the rise. They're back, baby, and they're badder than ever. The bee populations are not on state of decline, which would, in theory, mean that if chemtrails have something to do with the bee population, well, that means that now the chemtrails are actually helping to grow the bee population. Isn't that correct? Isn't that how that logic works? <laughs> if, something, if something happens before something else happened, that means that something definitely did happen, right? Uh, thank you, Levin214, for your $10 donation. $20 towards our $50 goal. 
There you go. Um, so the Camellia says that they will say the media is lying to you and it's a global conspiracy. Yes, that's the that's the funny thing is that whenever uh, you know it, it, it's there are always people who have these these conspiracy theories and no matter what you say, everything confirms everything that they believe. Right? It's because they're true believers. It, it, remind, it reminds me a little bit of uh, that. Have you ever seen that musical, uh, The Book of Mormon? Uh, the Book of Mormon, where he sings, uh, I believe that the Garden of Eden is in Jackson County, Missouri. And um, I am a Mormon, and a Mormon just believes, right? C conspiracies are about beliefs, right? It's I believe something, right? I have faith that there are chemtrails. And think about it this. If you, if you were to disprove chemtrails to a chemtrail believer, do you think that they would be relieved? Do you think that would they would be happy to hear that, that that this is not true? Like if if I were to be if I could prove to that woman that the bee population is actually increasing this year, do you think that she would be relieved or do you think she would actually be disappointed? She'd probably be disappointed, right? Just like when you find out any of like your childhood fantasies or fairy tales weren't real. People uh, people cling to their beliefs. They hold to these beliefs. It's a faith, right? It's not about facts or evidence. I mean, I, I didn't get the opportunity to stand up and speak about the chemtrails, but a lot of people who were there were huge fans of Senator Bill Eigel, who's running for governor as well as Jay Ashcroft. And there are a lot of Eigel fans out there. And the whole delegation is getting ready to vote on this. And I'm trying to raise my hand so I can say, hey, wait a minute here. Hold on. We've got Air Force veterans you know, in the House. We've got Senator Bill Eigel, all the big fans. I wanted to be able to say, and Bill Eigel had already left at this point, unfortunately. I want to be able to say, Bill Eigel is an Air Force veteran, and if they're spraying the chemical skies, he's in on it. And I want to I hear from all the veterans, Air Force veterans, did, were you spraying us? Were you spraying us with chemicals? The, I want to talk to the Air Force veterans in the room, because if it's true that, that we're being sprayed from the chemical skies with barium and, and aluminum and ammonia, and they're poisoning us all, I want to know who in this room is in on it, because definitely we all praised the military when we first started that meeting. But apparently we don't love the military completely because some of them we think are actually spraying us with barium and, and ammonia and aluminum in the skies. And then, and then, of course, add on top of that, I was just going to be like, of the people who are spraying us right now, they have families, right? They have like kids at college. Do they get to alert their families about the chemtrails? Do they get to let their families know that there's going to be a spraying that day? Also, the lady claimed that they weren't spraying in Africa and South America and in Europe. They do have those, those trails in the sky, by the way. Anywhere that there's plane traffic, there are contrails, which is what these are called. But I just didn't get the opportunity to, uh, I didn't get the opportunity to stand up and you know, ask them about which of the Air Force veterans who were in the room with us were in on the spraying, uh, uh, and also to ask if the people who were spraying the chemicals in the sky uh, got the chance to let their families and friends know that before they started spraying their neighbors that they lived next to. Because I'm imagining, I don't know, there's like maybe they've got some kind of a protective shield for the people who are the sprayers. Because honestly, if you're going to have a pilot and you're going to have a pilot doing the chemical sprays, then a pilot's going to say, there's no way that a pilot's going to uh, allow spraying to occur, you know, where his family's going to be or where his own house is going to be. He doesn't want to do it. Does he get a special gas mask, right? I wanted to ask these questions, but unfortunately I couldn't. You know why? Because they decided to have the vote. So the entire delegation all voted to send this just bat shit crazy resolution to the state and embarrass all of mid-Missouri. And I was the lone no vote. We'll be back with John Miltimore talking about election conspiracies when we wake on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. Expanse of time, a year might seem like a mere moment, but oh, what a year it's been. In September 2022, Austin and Stephanie Peterson embarked on a journey, a journey to wake up America. They began humbly, with just 20 souls tuning in, learning, listening, and though challenges arose, like the looming shadow of YouTube demonetization, their spirit never waned. And now, thanks to you, thousands rise with the sun to join them, to listen, to engage, to be a part of a community. So here's to you and to wake up America. For memories shared, for friends made, for the journey ahead, and for never, ever forgetting to rise and freedom. Happy anniversary.
I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. Believe me, Austin Peterson is the best. He's got the greatest Wake Up America show I've ever seen. Whenever I tune in in the mornings and watch the live stream, let me tell you, he has got the absolute best content. I love his guests. It's just a total blast to watch. And I highly endorse and recommend the Wake Up America show. It's terrific. Believe me. Is the outdoor your home about as exciting as a library? Then spice it up and unbore your space with our custom metal signs. Crafted with love and a bit of libertarian magic, you can customize your own metal sign at ap4libertyshop.com. So head to ap4libertyshop.com, customize your own metal sign today. Welcome to a world of vocal discovery at Peterson Voice Studio. I'm Justin Peterson, here to guide your musical journey. Envision a place where your voice reaches new heights, where every note tells a story. We embrace all singers, from the enthusiastic shower vocalists to aspiring stars, ensuring each voice finds its unique rhythm and tone. Are you ready to elevate your voice? Visit petersonvoicestudio.com and sign up for remote lessons tailored just for you. Let's begin this melodious journey together. Tired of spending your hard-earned money on woke corporations that don't share your pro-freedom values? Fed up with sipping liberal lattes and progressive cappuccinos? Introducing Founding Flavors from AP for Liberty Shop. Get your day started with Washington's revolutionary roast. As robust and principled as the man himself, this blend is the shot of energy heard round the world. Or maybe you want to taste the fervor of freedom with Adams's patriotic perk. It's as dynamic and balanced as the U.S. Constitution, sure to awaken your spirit of liberty. For the aficionado we've got the Jeffersonian Java, a complex mix of flavors that speaks volumes about your refined tastes. And don't forget Betsy's Liberty Lullaby, our decaf option. Crafted with the same care and dedication Betsy Ross put into our Star Spangled Banner, this blend lets you enjoy the taste of freedom anytime without losing sleep. No woke beans here, folks. Just pure, patriotic, pro-freedom flavors brewed with love for liberty. So why compromise your principles for a cup of coffee? Stand up for your values, perk up your patriotism, and start your day the American way. Get your founding flavors at apforlibertyshop.com. Good morning, rise in freedom. I'm Austin Peterson. You're watching and listening to the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. We're glad and thankful to have you here. People like Erz Mommy, Robbie Theremin, Bake Mayfield, Corey and Callie, Quest Fanning, my brother, Peters JJ, Joni Rankin, CJ824, the lovely rare Camellia. Nice to see everybody here. David Lee as well. Don't forget, we just launched our brand new community over at rumble.com. Oh, excuse me, at locals.com. Wakeupamericashow.locals.com. So if you want to have more fun with all of our freedom friends when the show isn't live, make sure you head over to wakeupamericashow.locals.com. Join the community. Get your first month free. Use the coupon code LIBERTYLOCAL. Join the community, make some friends, have some fun over at wakeupamericashow.locals.com. All right, well, you just heard me regale you with the tales of all the weirdness and big government authoritarianism that I fought against this weekend, and I took many, many lone no votes. Uh, the rest of the delegation wanted to send things like, I don't know, banning any increase in expansion of gambling in the state of Missouri. They wanted to, I guess, create some exceptions to the Second Amendment. And they also wanted to you know, fight the chemtrails. I don't know. Maybe I should have introduced a resolution about how to fight Bigfoot here in the state of Missouri. In Missouri, we actually call him Momo the Monster. 
Yeah, actually, that's true. Sasquatch. Election conspiracies also abound. A new poll that came out from the Skeptics Research Center says that, well, a large amount of Republicans, 58%, believe that the 2020 election was stolen and fraudulent. And actually, 49% of Democrats believe the same thing just about 2016. <laughs> So let's talk about election conspiracies before we get there very briefly. I do want to say thank you to all of our friends this morning. You just unlocked the bonus content. Someone just made a very large purchase over at APForLibertyShop.com. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And after our next interview, I will unlock, I will play that bonus content for you. Joining us live to talk about election conspiracies, chemtrails, and Bigfoot is the man himself, the editor at large of the Foundation for Economic Education, John Miltimore. John, are you in on it? I am not. I'm about as far on the outside as you can find. <laughs> good morning, John. Thanks for joining us here on the show. Yeah, good being with you. All right. So, um, I mean, listen. I mean, there's nothing like a good, you know, caucus meeting to lose even more faith in democracy. Not that I had a whole lot of faith in it in the first place, mm -hmm. but it seems as if election conspiracies are all the rage. But it does seem as if there is a real conspiracy in that the Democrats try and pretend like they weren't conspiracy theorists about the 2016 election and that it's a just an absolute travesty in the end of our of our democracy because the the Republicans by a 10 percent you know margin believe even more in the 2020 election being stolen. What's your thoughts on all this? Well, you know, Democrats will just tell you, but it, it really was a conspiracy in 2016 because the Russians, um, you know, put Trump in the White House, right? Um, no, like I, I think people need to kind of realize how dangerous this is. Um, the, the, what troubles me is I don't think there's any going back from this. I, I think this is the new normal. Um, I remember even as, as, as a kid and a young man, like after the election, whichever side lost would say they'd say, look, at least we're having this uh, peaceful transfer of power, and we need to, you know, remember how important that is. I think those days are gone, and, and and there's a couple of reasons. I think you know the left and the right, you know, for a long time haven't liked each other, but now they don't just hate each other; they're terrified of each other. And if you look, the size of government makes that paranoia, you know, kind of legitimate, because we're in an era now um, where when you lose, you don't just you know have to you know take your hat and go home. Um, you might be prosecuted. We're seeing this now. Like, we've never seen this before, where a former president um, is getting uh, prosecuted all over the place for all these different things. This isn't one thing, right? Like, the people are like, oh, January 6th. A lot of this has nothing to do with, you know, however your feelings on that are, a lot of this has nothing to do with January 6th. So I think on the left, like, you have it. If Trump wins, like, they're terrified there's going to be reprisals. Um, and on, on both sides, you know, you have this, this level of distrust, um, that is, you know, a big problem and, and, and they're approaching it from different perspectives too. Don't forget for, for Republicans, they, they really worry about voter fraud for, for, you know, Democrats in the left, they really worry about voter suppression. And, um, you know, I, I think if you really dial into this, is there voter fraud in, is there in elections? Absolutely. You can, you can look throughout American history and you can find, you know, all kinds of examples, really high profile stuff, you know, where, yeah, federal indictments even come down on, on people that were caught. Um, you know, unions have been busted over the years on a lot of this stuff. Um, but overall, voter fraud is pretty minimal. Now, I know mail-in ballots or something. If you go back to the Baker Commission with Carter, like they said, this is this is the path to voter fraud. We shouldn't do it. Well, now you have all these mail-in ballots. So th there's some you know justified concern there, um, but I still think it's pretty minimal. And then if you look at voter suppression, I'm sorry, having somebody present an ID when they vote is, is not voter suppression. Um, but you have a lot of people that believe it is. So you don't just have this level of paranoia because government's gotten so big and so powerful that the other side's terrible, but you have fundamental disagreement on how elections should be ran. And I, I think that's why you have this. It does control the media when, you know, not 100 percent, but you know, 98 percent of all of the media that Americans consume is left wing dominated. Now, you know, talk radio, conservative, Fox News, conservative, those are the mainstream media for the right. Now, on the alternative media front, it's a different factor. We don't really have good numbers or data yet 
for just about how many Americans are listening to alternative versus mainstream. Somebody needs to do a research study on that. Maybe that'd be a good project for fee because at the end of the day, I think it's possible that the mainstream isn't mainstream anymore. However, we don't know. We also don't know how effective it is because we don't have the kind of metrics. We don't get the kind of analytics from the alternative media that we do from the mainstream, right? Nielsen ratings and things like that. But it is my perception, and maybe it's biased by the fact that I'm far right center, and when it comes to the question of how the media operates, I've been on the inside, John, I've been at the commanding heights of the media in New York City to, you know, this humble podcast broadcast from a rural city in the, in the middle of Missouri. So, so maybe my, my view of this is skewed. I'd love it if you, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. But it does appear as if one form of election conspiracy is allowed and tolerated by uh, the media and American society, and the other one is not allowed, not tolerated, and a threat to our democracy. Is my perception off? No, I, I think it's correct. And if you look this to Bush v. Gore and well beyond, where uh, Stacey Abrams in Georgia and, and all these examples where people cried foul on elections. Um, and they were Democrats and it was kind of just overlooked. Um, now, I will say Trump took that to a whole new level, you know, and and the right, you know, really got on board. Um, and I, I think, you know, do I think you're correct? Yes. But I, I think um, don't forget, leading up to 2016, Trump was already crying, you know, rigged, rigged beforehand in, in, in case he lost um, th that that always troubled me when he got beat by Ted Cruz in Iowa. OK, this is a Republican caucus. He was saying he was cheated, it was rigged and, and everything. I think Trump just can't lose, okay? I think that's really what, and, and to me, there's something really dangerous about that. We need to, you know, be able to say, hey, you know, maybe, maybe there, I, I think 2020 did have historic levels of, of election fraud for a lot of different reasons. Like I said, there's always been election fraud in American elections. We have all kinds of evidence for that. Small and some elections, higher in other elections. Um, 2020 had the perfect storm, right? You had all these mail-in ballots. You had all the COVID stuff happening. And so I think there was more than, than previous elections, but that doesn't mean Trump won. And, and that doesn't mean you can throw a big fit about it. And, and he did himself damage. He did our country damage. Um, and I, I think, you know, I, I'm not joking. There's somebody in your comments who made this point. There's no going back from this. I really, I, I don't think we'll ever have elections again where both sides are like, dang, we fought the good fight and we lost. I think everyone going forward, it's going to be accusations of uh, voter fraud or voter suppression and anger and, and maybe riots. And um, I, I really, I worry about the future in that respect. Oh, I do too, John. I think that if Donald Trump wins the election, we're going to, we're going to get treated to another dose of gaslighting, like what happened in 2020 when uh, the Chaz... Uh, uh, commune was set up, people were being raped and murdered, and uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin was burning, and people were having to defend their private property. And meanwhile, the media is out there saying, fiery but mostly peaceful protests of Donald Trump's re-election happening this fall. It's going to be a lot more than the, the screaming progressive androgynous chick with horn rim glasses screaming, yeah. Uh, Donald Trump's election on Inauguration Day. It's going to be people who are going to be committing actual crimes, and and but the media is going to lie to us. They're going to be telling us that there's nothing going on, and people who defend themselves in, in civil unrest, they're going to be painted as the bad guys, John. Now, th that's my conspiracy theory. No, I, I, here, I really think you're right. And here's the thing. All media today feels partisan to me. There's almost nowhere you can go. Now, I think there's there's some people do a better job of, of reporting and, and getting to the truth and, than others. But it really feels like all media is partisan. And you mentioned 2020. I'll go back to 2016. I remember when Trump that won that election and everyone was shocked. You had schools closing for mourning, right? People crying and like melting down. I'm like, what is what, what's happened here? Like 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 they shut down classes for this because people were so shocked and horrified and people didn't know how to how to proceed like that's sort that. of its own yeah like, like the, the 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 post day election was was really weird the meltdowns and and, and closing schools and things and um it, like it, you would have thought like like a president had been shot or something right um it, it was a very very weird time 
and say, you know what? Like the other side wins sometimes. I, now, now, Trump supporters need to accept that fact. Leftists need to accept that fact. Sometimes your side does not win. And that is, when you talk, talk about constitutional republic or constitutional democracy, whatever you want to call it, you need to be able to have that. You be, you know, like you need to accept the fact your side will well, not win sometimes. You, you, well, here's the thing, John, like we are, our, I'm a republic. I'm a republican. I don't know if you affiliate with the party, but uh, the that we are our own worst enemies. Uh, when it comes to like election election turnout, we had people in Georgia during that special election a few years ago saying things like don't show up, don't vote because when you say things like when you undermine the democratic process and you undermine vo voting, then people are just like, "Oh, well, I just I might as well just not vote because it's not going to matter. It's not going to count anyway." And I mean, I kind of agree with Trump that you need to have enough of a majority of votes to win to sort of to 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 counteract like the the percentage of cheating that's going to happen in some of these states. And then on the other side, it's like if if people don't have faith in the democratic process, like they're not going to show up to vote. And then on the whole question of absentee, not absentee ballots, but um, vote by mail and things like that. The Republicans just walked back because they didn't trust it. They didn't participate. They could have been going around to the churches, to the community senators, to the old folks' homes, and gathering up votes the same way the Democrats are doing it, right? And and walked those votes into the to the polls in states where that's legal, like Pennsylvania and other places. Do, we need to we need to adapt to those strategies, but because Republicans are so fearful of these new voting techniques that got passed during the pandemic that I may not agree with. They Republicans, they don't want to adopt, adopt some of these tactics. And if you look, there's a reason Democrats love to have all this early voting. Like they, they'd, may, they'd let, uh, let you vote four months ahead of time if they could, right? Because they, they really take get out the vote stuff seriously. They're getting out early. They're signing up people, um, vote, vote harvesting. Like there's a lot of, you, you've heard that term, you know, we can like it or not, but, but, Harvesting votes is 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 legal, right? You get all these people, and maybe you find you know people that can bear, in, in nursing homes that can barely tell what they're signing. But you, like like the, the Democratic operations are are very slick on that front. Republicans are kind of like curmudgeoning a little bit. They they're not really into early voting and, and some of these other things. And um, I think this is why if you look at Democrats, they love huge turnout. That's why they like have, they're not worried about. Um, voter fraud, they're really concerned about suppression because they know the more turnout there is, the better they tend to do. So it's all about mass turnout. Um, and Republicans are going to lose more elections if they if they don't start to kind of, you know, get on and, and, and adapt to, to the new style. If, of voting. if we if Republicans, if we end up winning this fall, it won't be because of anything that we've done. It'll be because of how bad the Democrats are. Let me just reset real quick. Good morning. Good morning to our friends who are joining us live here on the Wake Up America show. If you were looking for an echo chamber, you're in the wrong place. You came in the wrong neighborhood. We are right of center and right libertarians and right that we're being logical. And while we would like to see more Republicans, right leaning libertarians or conservative type people get elected this fall. We got to be honest and realistic about what might be standing in the way. And usually that means that we're our own worst enemies. So help us in this fight to fight to win so that we can get more independent minded people on board because that's the majority of people. Click that like button on the stream and follow along with our adventures in election conspiracies from now until November. You're definitely not going to want to miss a single day of the Wake Up America show. So make sure you click the like button on the stream. Click the follow button as well so you can find us every Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. Central Time. That's when the Wake Up America show streams live. And I'm your host, Austin Peterson, joined now by John Miltimore. It's Mondays with Miltimore from the Foundation for Economic Education. He's their editor at large. We're talking about fearfulness, conspiracy, uh, and election fraud this fall. So, you, you know, when I read about the history of uh, Lyndon Bain Johnson, I think about uh, the amount of fraud that was engaged in for him to win his Senate race, which is kind of like a known fact. But people, there are people who say it doesn't happen today, John. Uh, but I think it does happen today, right? You kind of admitted that. No, if you look at American history, you can find all kinds of examples of voter fraud. You can go back to um, when U.S. Grant was president, and he knew a lot of the shenanigans going on in the South. 
Um, you know, you can go back to 1960, Kennedy years ago. Um, but, uh, but, but no, we stand it, Nixon on this oh podcast. <laughs> no, Nick, Nick, Nixon created so many of the lousy programs, you know, that, that we have today. Yeah, um, but JFK he, was the reason that we got into Vietnam. But anyways, go ahead. No, um, that's a whole nother, another conversation. Um, but yes, no, we, we know that there's voter fraud. Now, we, we, you know, the extent of it is is hard to tell. A lot of voter fraud goes undetected. Um, I do think if you take democracy, republicanism, whatever you want to call it, seriously, you need to make sure that you, you should have prudent checks to make sure that vote the votes that are being submitted are legitimate, that you, you, you don't want corruption. And I think I look in the last 20 years or so, everything we're doing it kind of makes it a little easier to have voter fraud. But it goes back to what I say. Democrats are not concerned about voter fraud. For them, all they're worried about is voter suppression because they want to maximize turnout. So you have you know these sides that not only do they disagree fundamentally on, on the ideas, um, but they, you know, and, and once they're in power, but even how people should be elected, fundamental disagreement there. Um, and they just kind of point, you know, Republicans choose point and, and say, uh, target Democrats for, for cheating and Democrats point at, at Republicans for suppressing the vote of minorities and so forth. And I don't see how we kind of reach any semblance of, you know, going back to where, yeah, you know, elections can be bitter, but, but, but we, we actually trust them. The level of distrust is, is pretty alarming on both I got, sides. I, I agree. I got one last question before I let you go. First, Levin214 says there's a large population who doesn't vote because they think our vote doesn't matter. Very true, Levin, and thank you for the donation. And Joni Rankin had a question for you, and we'll leave it uh, uh, with the last word there, John. She says, John, why is it impossible to have a unified voting process for national elections? Your answer. Yeah, that's a good question. And, and, and here's why. Because you have 50 states in this country that the way this country was constructed, they had they, they were autonomous, right? Like the power was vested in them. We didn't want one sort of uniform uh, you know, government in, in DC that said, we have to, these are the rules you have to follow. If you if you believe in the idea of, of states' rights and said this is where where we wanted the power, you know, if you believe in federalism, you like the idea that states set up these rules, not the federal government, but it does create a whole host of problems too. And when once you reach a, le a level of political tribalism and partisanship where um, sides are trying to pass, you know, rules and, and, and laws just to, to kind of benefit their own side. It is John Miltimore, uh, editor at large, Foundation for Economic Education. Anything else you'd like to say or plug before we let you go? No, like always, just check out uh, our website at fee.org. We have uh, lots of good content up there, and I'm on uh, Substack, The Take by John Miltimore. There we go, The Take by John Miltimore. Thank you very much for your time today, John. We appreciate you. I'll give you a round of applause as we see you to the exits. Have a good day. Hey, have a great week, Dave. I like that. That's good. Viva la libertad carajo. Viva la yerba mate. Okay, I have angered the entire nation of Argentina with that video. Can no, you tell why? Oh, God! No, God! A great no. collective cry had risen out as if a million voices cried out in pain, and then there was silence. Now, watch this video one more time from this weekend of me trying yerba mate from Argentina for the first time and see if you can tell why people are upset with me. Watch. I like that. That's good. Viva la libertad carajo. Viva la yerba mate. There it is. Do you know why? Can you tell why it is that, that Argentina is freaking out over that video? Like that. All of Argentina is upset with me. I've lost all my fans down there because of that one video. We'll have Tony Martinez explain it, as well as talking about Javier Malay wanting closer ties with the United States, and Brazil might move to ban Twitter slash X when we get back on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star fiber talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to fiber.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct, like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans are cowboys. We are that 
God, guns, gold, and girls. It's wild here. And we should stay that way. We shouldn't allow a European version of conservatism to come and infect us here. We like it wide open spaces here, you know, deep in the heart of Texas and all that. Hey there, it's your favorite Vice President Joe Biden. I wanted to talk to you today about the Wake Up America show, the best source for all your political news and commentary. But before I get started, let me just make sure I have all my notes in, in order. Yeah. Okay. okay, where was I? All right, the Wake Up America show. It's a great way to stay informed and make your voice heard. Boy, what was I saying again? All oh, right, right, right. The Wake Up America show. It's important that we all stay engaged and knowledgeable about um, what's going on in our country and, uh, you know, the thing. But how long where was I going with all this? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Wake Up America show. It, it's a fantastic resource. And if you really want to make a difference, man, you can sign up to be a monthly donor at wakeupamericashow.com slash support. Now, uh, where was I? Um. Oh, that's right. The Wake Up America Show. So if you want to stay woke and support a great cause, head on over to wakeupamericashow.com slash support and sign up to be a monthly donor today. And if you're feeling generous, you can even give a donation in my name. Thanks for listening and keep on keeping on, America. Come on, man. the wake up america show with my dad today i'd like to share with you three reasons why you should visit dad's online store at apforlibertyshop.com number one you can get exclusive freedom loving merch designed by ap himself or me mom steffi liberty laura has made some designs as well and blimey they are great number two most of these products are so wicked that they aren't even allowed to be advertised on facebook or instagram modern machine guns and a proper keychain plus our grover Cleveland t-shirt is so spicy apparently that leftists on Facebook specifically banned it from appearing on the website. Number three, you're supporting liberty lovers just like you. Spend your money where you earn it and you help me pups build a community that supports what you believe. Bloody hell, this commercial is running too long. Gotta run. Bye now. Don't forget to visit apforlibertyshop.com. That's apforlibertyshop.com. Guys, welcome back to the show. We're still waiting on Tony Martinez. I know he's there. We just haven't got him hooked up yet for the interview to talk about Javier Malay of Argentina wanting to build out relations with the United States and Brazil, possibly banning X because they don't like Elon Musk. What? We'll talk about that. But first, you guys unlocked today's bonus content, so I owe you a mini documentary, don't I? Yes. So while I wait for Tony Martinez to join us in the green room and then to get him on the show for you all, why don't you all unlock that beautiful bonus content for this week's theme, which is the guns that won. So enjoy this and we'll be right back with Tony Martinez. Wake Up America shows bonus content series, The Guns That Won. Today's show features an American legend, the 1903 Springfield rifle. 
The 1903 Springfield Rifle, an iconic American firearm, was developed after the Spanish-American War and served through the Vietnam War. Originally, the U.S. Army used the .30 40 Craig Jorgensen, but its limitations during the Spanish-American War led to the search for a superior rifle. The U.S. Army Ordnance Board tasked Springfield Armory with creating a new rifle, leading to the development of the 1900 prototype, inspired by the Mauser and Craig designs. This prototype evolved into the 1901 model, which featured a simpler design, a stronger bolt, and a new bayonet mechanism, overcoming the Craig Jorgensen's shortcomings. Following further improvements, the 1902 prototype was developed, employing a more powerful point, 30 caliber round, but causing more erosion issues. On June 20th, 1903, the Springfield Armory began mass production of what would be known as the 1903 Springfield Rifle, with a manufacturing goal of hundreds per day. The initial design of the 1903 Springfield featured a two-piece wooden body, a straight stock, and an internal magazine combining accuracy and portability. In 1905, the rifle saw enhancements with new sights and the introduction of the model 1905 knife bayonet, followed by ammunition upgrades in response to German innovations. During World War I, the 1903 Springfield rifle was lauded for its reliability and accuracy, serving both as an infantry and a sniper rifle. Despite the introduction of new rifles, the 1903 Springfield remained in service undergoing modifications and being used in various roles, including as a special target rifle in the 1930s. With the advent of World War II and shortages of the M1 Garand, the 1903 Springfield was reintroduced. A specific sniping version, the Model 1903A4, was created and became the primary sniper rifle for the U.S. Army during World War II. The 1903 Springfield continued to serve in the Korean and even the Vietnam War, with the last rifles leaving service in 1974, marking 71 years of military use. Over 1.3 million units were built, cementing the 1903 Springfield Rifles place as a pivotal piece of American military history. Thank you for watching and supporting the Wake Up America Show's bonus content program. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that little mini documentary. I know that Robbie Thurman did. I'm of course, all of the firearms lovers and aficionados out there. That bonus content is brought to you by viewers and listeners just like you. On the Wake Up America show for the last month and a half, I've been producing these five minute mini documentaries every day as an opportunity to help to increase the monetization of the show. And you guys have a completely unbroken string of bonus content unlocks, including today. So thank you very much. This week's theme continues last week's which is the guns that won, guns that helped shape and build the American Republic. The 1903 Springfield was today. What will tomorrow's be? You'll have to come back tomorrow and help us to monetize that bonus content if you'd like to see it. Thank you so much for joining us. 662 people joining us live over at Rumble. Good morning to you all. I think the next topic probably has oh, God, joining no, us out to talk no, about this and then no. matters of actual substance in South America. And there's a lot of big news that you can use is the U.S. Latin American envoy to the Wake Up America show, Tony Martinez. <laughs> good morning, Tony. Good morning, Austin. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Steffi. And again, yes, this, yes, the sacred. Do not, once you put your bombilla in the gourd, do not move. So. <laughs> okay, so my sin was that when I create, when I built my Yerba Mate with the tea there, my, uh, after I had set it in there, you're not supposed to move the bombilla. It is a mortal sin to move the, the metal straw. Right. You're not supposed to stir. You're not supposed to stir. You're supposed to let the hot water draw out all of the, you know, all the wonderful compounds that are in your mate. The okay. biochemist in me is like going, wow, pretty interesting stuff. Anyway. Okay. For another, well, another well, thank topic. you for that. We'll definitely talk about that another time. Right now we should talk about so much is happening in South America, whether it's Javier Malay uh, and his Libertad Avanza coalition and his desire to create stronger ties with the United States, or whether it's Brazil's dictator who wants to ban X because he doesn't like Elon Musk, where should we begin, Tony? Okay, well, let's let's uh, start with something really, really positive here, which is Javier Malay uh, literally 
the people were lined up for blocks, young people to become part of Javier's party coalition, La Libertad Avanza, which is so important because Argentine congressional elections are happening next year. And this is what's going to give uh, Malay the working, hopefully majority that will allow him to complete the, the badly needed reforms that Argentina uh, needs uh, to, to fix its economy and start being a beacon of hope and progress and economic opportunity for all the Argentine people and in the Western hemisphere. So, so that was I, that that was really it was really significant. And also he uh met with uh our uh the 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 commander of of Southern of, of CENTCOM, uh General Laura Richardson and uh and with our US ambassador to Argentina, Mark Stanley, who I had the opportunity to meet with in person uh, when I was in Argentina in March. Uh, very important movements to strengthen the strategic alliance between the United States and Argentina. And uh, it's really it's a, a good story, a very Tony. Good it's yeah. got a lot of people fired up. Um, fascinatingly, the, the people who uh, consider themselves to be the most pro West many times here, uh, many right wingers who are of my ideological ilk were very concerned because he's trying to establish an alliance with the US empire. And this is a sign that Javier Malay is not a real libertarian. And I, and I shouldn't give those voices too much credit because they really have no say at all at, in, in American politics. But I think it's it's worthy of of asking because I mean Javier Malay I mean he's one of us I mean he's 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 like me he is a exactly. true he is a true limited government liber liberty loving uh, uh, libertarian who is elected as president of his country eighth largest country in the world so what he says and what he does matters not just for Argentina it matters here in the United States. His impact is reverberating around the world. I'm selling his sneakers, sneakers with pictures of his face to people in Japan, for God's sakes. What he is doing, it, it is, it's a massive revolution in thinking and, and an influence for the ideas that I'm, I'm trying to advance here on this show. So talk to me a little bit more, not just about the, the nuts and bolts, but from an ideological perspective, what does it mean for Argentina to turn from China, to turn from Russia, Notably, you you told me this weekend China has something like a southern base in Argentina. What does it yes. mean? What does it mean for Javier Malay ideologically? What does it mean for Argentina to have a stronger alliance with the United States? What does that mean for global affairs? Well, it it means that the ideas of liberty and opportunity, you know, will will have some reinforcement and will stand up to the globalitarian authoritarian tendencies that are all over the world at this time and really responsible for most of the, the social economic problems that we've seen across the planet. And, and also, Millet is, God bless him, he is being authentic, genuine, and walking his talk. He said it very clearly, I believe in the West, I am interested in working with the United States, Israel, any country that believes in the ideas of freedom and Western civilization, period, end of story, full stop. And he is acting as consistently as he can uh, with that. So it means it, what it means for the United States is that we're going to have a, an, an, an ally that will you know, hopefully we we need to work on the commerce side of this thing. Uh, there's still a lot to be done to open up Argentina to commerce, international commerce. Uh, but it's going to uh, take some of the steam off of, uh, you know, all of this migration and all of these issues, because if Argentina is doing well, the United States is going to be doing well, because it, it, it's, it, it will reverberate. Everybody's fleeing to come to the United States, and we have that chaos that we see on the border now. Uh, and we need to address some of the root causes. And one of the, the root causes are the lack of economic opportunity, the corruption. And Malay also has been very, very strict on that, uh, getting rid of all of the graft and the excess and all of the abuses that have been going on on the, on the public payroll in Argentina. And it's something that 
uh, is, is being taken notice all across uh, the Western Hemisphere. For sure, and and certainly many uh, freedom lovers here in the United States are keenly aware of what he's trying to accomplish. And in order for him to win uh, his election next year, re-election, he's going to need more support from people in Argentina, but he's also going to need to increase his congressional majority in order to get his agenda passed, yes. because many of the reforms that he has advanced have not made it across the finish line. I played the video uh, just a moment ago. I can pull it up again uh, right now while we're talking so people could see this video that you shared with me showing people lined up in Buenos Aires for blocks yes. to join Javier Malay's Libertad Avanza Coalition. Now, Argentines this weekend, not only were they outraged and threatening me over the moving of the Bombilla, but they were also a little miffed to hear me calling Libertad Avanza a coalition. Apparently, Libertad Avanza is going to become a full-fledged political yes. party. That's correct. What but it started mean? as a co it started as a, as a as a coalition. But it's, I mean, regardless, the point is, Malay the 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 young people in particular are standing by Malay, and this is consistent with the talks that I had with Argentines on the ground when I was in Buenos Aires in March. They were all telling me, we don't have any old, better alternative. This is it. We go back to what we had. We're screwed. We have to go follow through on this. And it is painful. Uh, but uh, we know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And people, you know, and, and, and the proof in the pudding is the uh, economic indicators are stabilizing. Inflation is coming down. Uh, the reserves are being built. And... What Malay has to navigate are really the two demographics that are most seriously affected by all of this uh, austerity and also inflation, which are the sector that er earns minimum wage and pensioners, because they don't have any other resources. So basically, Malay is saying whatever resources the government does have, they're going to help those two particular demographics, but they're also they're going to they're not going to tolerate any more corruption or graft or or abuses that have been endemic in the system and they keep exposing it and it's pretty outrageous some of the stuff that he's revealed that had been going on for literally decades great insight with tony martinez who's joining us live right now from new york new york tony martinez has become a regular guest on the wake up america show covering south american issues which are of importance to liberty loving yankees Javier Malay of Argentina, we're discussing right now. With 752 people watching live on Rumble and 350 or so watching us on X.com, well over 1,000 people watching us live this morning. Good morning to everyone, and thank you for joining us. If today is the first time you've watched the Wake Up America show, we do hope that you'll make us a regular destination listening in the mornings. The show schedule is 7 to 9 a.m. Central Time, Monday through Fridays, We'd love to have you become a regular guest so you can hear more great interviews and insights, just like what you're hearing right now from Tony Martinez. We'd like to get your help with something. Click that like button if you haven't already over at x.com or formerly Twitter. It's a little heart. Click the heart button and then click repost over on x.com so that we can get in more people's feeds and fight for these ideas that Javier Malay stands for. If you want to viva libertad your carajo, then we'd love to have you be a regular guest on the show. Okay, Tony, back to the news. Javier okay. Malay of Argentina faces a struggle in how to deal with China. It's a big issue for the United States as well. There was a southern base that you mentioned, but also I'm reading a news story that says that Javier Malay is starting to soften his rhetoric against China because political realities in regards to the free trade of goods may be standing in his way. Can you explain to us this situation? Well, I mean, this is more being practical and pragmatic. There is no question there have been, there were agreements signed with China by Argentina in prior administrations. And Malay has basically taken the position, we will honor what was agreed to. Uh, we will certainly evaluate those agreements uh, for example, with regards to the base that China has in New Ken, which is in Patagonia, um, they are, they, there was a, uh, apparently a, a lack of transparency uh, uh, or, or full, complete transparency, transparency in, the, in that agreement. 
But I mean, Malay is saying, okay, we're going to, regarding business and trade, he said, well, you know, he's saying, we're going to continue to honor agreements that we met, but we're going to be um, pretty much hesitant to, to do anything new. You know, he basically, and he said as a candidate, I'm interested in working with and having uh, agreements with countries that believe in the ideas of freedom, full stop, Western civilization. So that's how he's, it's a balancing test. And, you know, he's, he's, he's going to make it work. So far, so good. God bless him. Talk to us now, Tony, about what's happening with Brazil. This is a big news story yeah, today yeah. with Elon Musk in Brazil, where they, apparently they are calling for, or the president of Brazil is asking for uh, X to ban certain political accounts. Give us an overview of this, would you? Well, the the, the problems, uh, the, the challenge right now with um, X and Brazil, uh, Twitter and Brazil, is, you know, Elon Musk, and God bless him too, has been a real free speech proponent. Uh, the Brazilian government has taken issue with um, certain accounts and certain, uh, you know, social media that they believe uh, is disinformation. Uh, and they, there's, there's been a struggle between how do you manage disinformation uh, intended to stir people up uh, versus respecting free speech. And it is, you know, we, we have this challenge, I, I concede that we, we have this challenge of how do we manage and regulate uh, some speech in, you know, because even we have free speech, the First Amendment in the United States, but, you know, always, you know, we always remember, I always remember from the, you know, from law school, the classic the story when we're told, taught the First Amendment saying, you're not allowed to scream. It's not free, free free speech to yell fire in a crowded auditorium when there isn't a fire. So- But if there is a fire- <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, Elon Musk, I but think- every, is the, prob the problem with that point of thinking, on, unfortunately though, Tony, or maybe fortunately, is that uh, I see everything that the, the Democrat, 98%, maybe not what John Fetterman says these days, but 98% of what Democrats <laughs> in this country are saying these days is disinformation. And everything that I say, the Democrats, the left sees as disinformation. Right. So, I mean, the, the you know, here's the thing. I'd rather receive disinformation provided that I'm able to receive good information as well. And what we saw during the pandemic is the truth is, is that when people talk about, you know, managing disinformation, Tony, they met, the disinformation was initially that there this COVID-19 might have leaked from a lab. No, no, no. It came from a wet market when a pangolin kissed a turtle, right? When governments control the flow of information, right. the truth becomes disinformation and disinformation becomes the truth. It becomes an Orwellian nightmare yeah. in reality, Tony. Right. Yeah. No, and 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 I would me personally would lean on uh, and, and side with that perspective. But I but but presenting this is what Brazil has been arguing. And one other thing that um, was that, that was brought out is that uh, it's very hard to identify some of these accounts that are, you know, publishing all but of this Elon's anonymity. Back. I mean, Elon yeah. is saying he, you know, he, yeah. Brazil is asking Elon to block some X accounts because they're saying it's hate speech, right? Sure. And And he's refusing to do it. I think that's very brave of him. You know, he's, he's not, he's not going to comply with with Brazil, I mean, and Brazil's going to have the challenge of how do they, you know, block, you know, their population from getting access to Twitter. I think this promotes a some some self reflection in Brazilian society uh, to to look at that and determine really what rights do Brazilians have, and also to encourage more critical thinking. Because, you know, if you do use critical thinking, you know, some of the stuff you see social media is just a joke. You know that you can't take some of the stuff that you see seriously. I believe uh, half of what I see and none of what I hear, I like to say. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. So, no, and, and that's probably the, the healthiest way to approach uh, anything on social media is to be skeptical uh, and, and asking questions. Uh, I do that all the time when I'm debating with people um, and uh, on, you know, on Twitter. So it, it, it's an important it's an important uh, development. We'll see now how far Brazil is going to go 
with Elon. Uh, it's something to pay uh, close attention to and hopefully free speech and you know critical thinking is going to prevail over uh again control by the state uh we know what we know what we know what generally happens when the state does things mm -hmm. uh, the other important the other really quick important news before i know we're, we're running out of time but another big development that happened over the the weekend was the the Ecuadorian uh, government uh, raided the Mexican embassy in Quito, Ecuador, to re retrieve a the, the convicted ex vice president uh, George Glass, G L A S, and uh, that Mexico had given him asylum. Oh, damn, and Tony. Yeah, no, it, and and this is pretty big stuff because it was it is a violation of the Vienna Convention, uh, to of the an agreement that all countries to go into another embassy. It's considered uh, sovereign territory, but the backstory on that, and we're going to see what happens is Mexico. Of course, we we have to ask. Well, why did Mr. Glass pick Mexico? Well, Mexico had been giving asylum and refuge to like a number of former Ecuadorian politicians who were either involved with narco, uh, you know, with narco trafficking or corruption, and it became a haven. And I, I believe the Ecuadorian government said, this is an abuse. Um, this guy was tried, uh, convicted. Um, we're not going to let him leave the country. Certainly, there's a lot going on down south of the border in South America yeah. and Mexico and otherwise. And thank God we've got Tony Martinez thank to you. give us all of the insider information on that, as well as how to handle your yerba mate. Tony, yeah. any, anything else? We're running out of time. Anything else you want to share real quick before we go? Well, you can follow me at uh, on Twitter at US uh, L-A-T-A-M Envoy. And uh, I appreciate all the good work you're doing, Austin, you and Stephanie and you know, blessings to Baby Hazel. We'll be celebrating that uh, later in the year and uh, all the great work that you're doing. And uh, look forward to being back on the show uh, in, in the near future. That's right. I just retweeted uh, Tony Martinez's account. So if you want to follow him over at x.com, head over to mine because you know where that's at, AP for Liberty, US Lat Am Envoy, US L A T A M E N V O Y. Make sure that you follow Tony over there so you can get all of his latest news and, ups, uh, 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 and updates as well. Tony, you're the man. Thank you so much for all of that. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thanks for being so generous with your time. Likewise. Have a wonderful friendship. day. Take care. You you as well. That's Tony Martinez. Give him a round of applause. Wow. The numbers continue to climb over there on Rumble. We'd love to see it. But the show is over. I know. Uh, yes. It's sad. Although, real quick, there's a little bit more show to go. Yes. Yes. Are you excited about that? Oh, uh, to hear the news? At 9.05 a.m. So, what? Ten? No. Nine minutes from now, the Wake Up America show's spinoff show. Yeah. We're so big now that we have spinoff shows. Isn't that exciting? Hustling and homemaking. Episode number two drops less than five, live in five, no, 9.05 a.m. Central Time. So eight or nine minutes from now, would you like to see the show? Would you like to see Stephanie's Hustling and Homemaking show? I know you do. Austin, how can I see Stephanie's new show, the second episode? I loved the first episode. Well, all you got to do is go to ap4libertyshop.com. That's AP, the number four, ap4libertyshop.com. And it's right at the very top. You just click that little button and it will premiere. See that watch here? Right? No, well, actually, you can't see that little watch here there because the screen is a little too small. Oops, sorry. But there's a watch here button over here. See my cursor? You can either click on this right there, that picture. It'll take you to the video. Or you can go over to watch here. Click on that and it will take you over to the video here. It premieres in six minutes. That's right, six minutes from now. So there's more show to go. Our spinoff show, visit it at apforlibertyshop.com. And you demanded it, I supplied it. The Wake Up America Show community, brand new, launching today. Yeah. Wake Up America Show community on Locals. Just go to wakeupamericashow.locals.com. That's wakeupamericashow.locals.com. Get a free month. Liberty Local. Use that code. Liberty Local. All one word. Get a free month. Head on over there. Hang out with some friends. Make posts. You know, maybe get a date. Who knows? And we'll see you guys tomorrow right here on the Wake Up America show at Wake Up.
americashow.com. Bye, guys. Enjoy the new show, Hustling and Homemaking. See you in five. Expanse of time, a year might seem like a mere moment, but oh, what a year it's been. In September 2022, Austin and Stephanie Peterson embarked on a journey, a journey to wake up America. They began humbly, with just 20 souls tuning in, learning, listening, and though challenges arose, like the looming shadow of YouTube demonetization, their spirit never waned. And now, thanks to you, thousands rise with the sun to join them, to listen, to engage, to be a part of a community. So here's to you and to wake up America for memories shared for friends made for the journey ahead and for never ever forgetting to rise and freedom happy anniversary I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message believe me Austin Peterson is the best he's got the greatest wake up America show I've ever seen whenever I tune in in the mornings and watch the live stream let me tell you he has got the absolute best content. I love his guests. It's just a total blast to watch. And I highly endorse and recommend the Wake Up America show. It's terrific. Believe me. Is the outdoor your home about as exciting as a library? Then spice it up and unbore your space with our custom metal signs. Crafted with love and a bit of libertarian magic, you can customize your own metal sign at ap4libertyshop.com. So head to ap4libertyshop.com, customize your own metal sign today. Welcome to a world of vocal discovery at Peterson Voice Studio. I'm Justin Peterson, here to guide your musical journey. Envision a place where your voice reaches new height, where every note tells a story. We embrace all singers, from the enthusiastic shower vocalists to aspiring stars, ensuring each voice finds its unique rhythm and tone. Are you ready to elevate your voice? Visit petersonvoicestudio.com and sign up for remote lessons tailored just for you. Let's begin this melodious journey together. Tired of spending your hard-earned money on woke corporations that don't share your pro-freedom values? Fed up with sipping liberal lattes and progressive cappuccinos? Introducing Founding Flavors from AP for Liberty Shop. Get your day started with Washington's revolutionary roast. As robust and principled as the man himself, this blend is the shot of energy heard round the world. Or maybe you want to taste the fervor of freedom with Adams's patriotic perk. It's as dynamic and balanced as the U.S. Constitution, sure to awaken your spirit of liberty. For the aficionados, we've got the Jeffersonian Java, a complex mix of flavors that speaks volumes about your refined tastes. And don't forget Betsy's Liberty Lullaby, our decaf option. Crafted with the same care and dedication Betsy Ross put into our star-spangled banner, this blend lets you enjoy the taste of freedom anytime without losing sleep. No woke beans here, folks. Just pure, patriotic, pro-freedom flavors brewed with love for liberty. So why compromise? your principles for a cup of coffee. Stand up for your values, perk up your patriotism, and start your day the American way. Get your founding flavors at apforlibertyshop.com.